the long-awaited test flight of SpaceX's Starship is closer than ever as the FAA finally greenlit Starbase. For now, there are a lot of things that SpaceX needs to get done quickly to get ready for its landmark flight. And of course, the company can't skip Stage Zero either. In addition to the main characters, such as the launch tower, we can't forget another vital element, the orbital launch mount. The orbital launch mount is likened to a real genius design. So, how will SpaceX go about constructing the structure? And what does it mean for Starship? All this and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Let's start at the beginning by learning what the orbital launch mount is and does. Basically, the launch mount is a metal structure that supports the upright rocket before it launches. It's a component of a typical launch pad. Umbilical cables from the launch mount provide the rocket with power, cooling liquids, and top-up propellant before launch. The structure also helps shield the rocket from lightning strikes. The launch mount also has features that minimize damage from the rocket's launch. When a rocket first ignites, valves lining the launch mount spray hundreds of thousands of gallons of water into the air around the exhaust, which helps lessen the rocket's deafening roar. Trenches beneath the launch mount also direct the rocket's exhaust out and away from the craft, so the flames can't rise back up and engulf the rocket itself. What about SpaceX's orbital launch mount? What are its dimensions? Everything seems huge at Starbase. The two main components in an orbital launch mount are six columns and an orbital launch table. The hexagonal symmetry all the way up to the mount's foundation stack suggests that SpaceX's new Starship pad design will begin with the bare minimum required for a strong launch pad. SpaceX may change the design for Super Heavy, but the thrust section of Starship is attached to a skirt with six strong sections that host the landing legs and hold the clamps. The sheer heft of around 2 meters wide steel and rebar columns filled with concrete and pilings at least as wide and more than 30 meters deep certainly hints at a final structure capable of surviving the fury of the Starship's super heavy booster. The upper part of the foot pole is being assembled in a separate area by talented SpaceX engineers. Estimates say that the two parts are approximately 20 meters long, and in my honest opinion, it must be around 12 to 15 meters. Notably, as Musk said, this launch mount is not easy to build. The biggest reason is that concrete pads are absolutely gigantic and take a very long time and lots of money to build. It also takes a lot of time to weld. SpaceX also needs to wait a long time between fit checks. It's very complex with a lot of moving parts. Six columns of OLM are filled with concrete and built in a concrete hexagon next to the capturing tower. It has an approximate dimension length of 5 meters and 2.4 meters in diameter. Four of them are steel tube components, one of which is large and with a short distance between two steel plates. They have another design to connect the two steel bars together. The powerful 16 threaded rods are now anchored deep in the concrete of the columns. Each of the 16 threaded rods is anchored to the concrete to a depth of about 4 meters, with this arrangement making no sense of these welded plates and anchor bolts. Thick-walled stainless steel pipes with branches have been added to the launch table. So far, it seems they go around the launch table. The branches move inward on narrower sections. Speaking of the launch table, of course, it has to be round and must be split into several small compartments about 5 meters high, the existing additional sections with steel plates. Also, the Starship test table is like a launch table with a clamp. These clamps will be made of stainless steel and designed to be very flexible, to be activated by the remote control system. This will help to fix the Super Heavy booster when it's placed on the launch pad. Plus, it is during the Starship the projection is also very flexible when exposed. One of the special design points of the orbital launch mount is the cutout in the launch table for the sound suppression water system. This would create a huge flow rate of 300,000 gallons of water per minute. Another effect that SpaceX might be aiming for is to cool the Raptor engines after a long flight. 
but an environmental problem is when water is poured and evaporates under the extreme heat of the engine exhaust. It makes up most of the giant exhaust plumes. In order to perfect the water system, SpaceX must install pipes and high-pressure pumping elements, and a launch table. But how Elon Musk's engineers designed and installed it is still a mystery. Regardless, the orbital launch mount plays an extreme role for SpaceX. To create a fully reusable launch system for its interplanetary Starship vehicle, SpaceX has had to solve a myriad of technical challenges, such as slowing down the giant spacecraft as it re-enters Earth's atmosphere near orbital velocities. But perhaps the biggest challenge with rockets as always is its mass is quite mundane. The goal of a rocket is to create the lightest possible vehicle with maximum performance. In theory, this sounds simple. But in practice, anything containing volatile liquids at high pressures is simple. And with a fully reusable launch system, SpaceX has the additional challenge of building vehicles that can withstand the rigors of launch performance in a vacuum and then return, screaming through the atmosphere, to get back to sea level pressure. The need to build lightweight, sturdy, and adaptable vehicles sometimes leads to interesting design options, including the SpaceX orbital launch mount. Another reason is that super heavy boosters do not have the legs to land on concrete like most rockets do. The aim is to reduce overall weight to make it possible to carry more cargo and fuel to orbit and Mars. So the design team came up with the idea of building a catch tower and also built orbital launch mounts to hold super heavy boosters and support starships to prepare for the next launch. During an orbital launch attempt, a reusable Super Heavy first stage booster will detach from the Starship and return to Earth for a vertical landing. SpaceX eventually intends to use grab weapons on the launch tower to capture the descending first stage. After catching the Super Heavy booster, the first stage will have four wings attached to its body to prevent it from falling. Also, it'll rotate a distance so that it puts the Super Heavy in the correct position of the orbital launch mount. At this point, the clamps on the launch table are adjusted to fix the first stage. The capturing tower will then release the body of the booster and rotate back to its original position, and the wings will also turn down and then be installed and continue for the next launch on the orbital launch mount. Of course, to put such designs into practice would require years of refinement and experimentation. But it's worth a try. And with that, today's episode has come to an end. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.